Um, so my name is Katja Seltman and um, I'm at the University of California, Santa Barbara and my co-authors, Catherine Sullivan, who's a graduate student at Marquette University um, and the Milwaukee Public Museum, uh, Jennifer Zaspel, who is head of zoology at MPM um, and also the lead on the project I'm gonna be talking about today. Um, Jorit Polin, um, who is the developer and innovator at Global Biotic Interactions. And um, what I'd like to relate here is uh, some of our experience while making um, parasite host associations visible using Global Biotic Interactions. So um, this is a, a talk about a project. It's a, a large um, NSF advancing digitization of biodiversity collections project that was funded in September 1st of 2019. Um, the full title is Digitizing Collections uh, to Trace Parasite Host Associations and Predict the Spread of Vector-Borne Disease. Um, and like many of these ADBC thematic collection networks, um, it's a big uh, project. Uh, just starting September 1st, 2019, three years in running, um, we have presently 28 total institutions um, in this project, so it's quite a lot, um, with over 110 participants. Um, there's a lot of mini goals. Um, but in short, our main goal is to digitize 1.2 plus million arthropod records um, from uh, biodiversity collections. Uh, so these are records from natural history collection databases and inside natural history museums. Um, on top of that, uh, the goal of the project is to take at least half a million interaction records, biotic interaction records, um, from these occurrence records and um, index them through global biotic interactions, GLOBI for short. Um, so a quick introduction to uh, what GLOBI is, um, uh, probably not new to folks here in the Tadwig community, um, but it was started in about 2013 by uh, Yorit um, and uh, as a means of um, indexing biotic interactions from multiple sources. So sources can be from natural history collection records, it can be from uh, iNaturalist, um, also uh, from literature sources. Um, and the strength of Globi is that it provides access to the species interaction data by combining disparate and very different data sets with each other. Um, and so for us in collections, this is important. Um, two things are very important for us. Let's see if I can get my pointer to work. Yeah, there we go. Um, is this interaction relationship. So there's a museum specimen um, and it has a relationship with either an observation or sometimes another museum specimen. So it's this interaction relationship and then also the citation as it's stored in Globi um, and the citation is a link to that voucher specimen uh, that is found within the institutional database. Um, and under the covers, on sort of on the back end, um, uh, this be ability to map interaction terms, um, they're mapped together uh, in a way using the relations ontology. So um, interaction terms uh, that uh, are uh, indexed by Globi are then uh, summari summarized or mapped to relation ontology terms, thus allowing us to take verbatim information coming from these collections um, and uh, looking at it uh, together. But what our experiences taught us over um, the course of the project so far is that um, our terrestrial parasite tracker project is this in order to share interaction information is very much a software issue, but it's also more of a people issue because um, we are a community of collection managers and parasite specialists where lots of the information about the interactions is actually held in the expertise of the individuals and is not explicit on the specimen. So uh, to say the same point again, um, 
we have these interactions and these will be mapped or mapped to RO terms, relation ontology terms, but by who and when does this happen? Let me show you a real example. So um, this is a slide from the Purdue University Entomology Department. Um, and it's a slide of a mite. Um, so it's an ectoparasitic mite of a pocket gopher. Um, the specimen is this, it's somewhere in the center here in this uh, little piece in the middle. Um, and the, there is no explicit interaction that says that this specimen is a parasite of some pocket gopher. Um, and so there's several options about how this data could be entered into an institutional database. Um, option one would be that blank is translated into just biologically interacts with. Um, uh, and there's more than two options, really. Uh, and this would be, you know, R, this RO uh, URI. Um, and the translation would be might interacts with pocket gopher. Um, option number two um, is uh, a translation that could occur because we know more or the collection manager actually knows more about the collector in Wilson. In Wilson was a parasitologist and Wilson collected uh, uh, mites off of animals um, throughout this person's career. Um, uh, the collection manager or parasitologist also may know that this species of mite is a ectoparasite of a particular species of pocket gopher even though this information is not necessarily on this specimen. And so option two would be that blank in this case actually means parasite of, which is more detailed information than what is presently found on the specimen. Um, also then providing translated information that could be potentially more valuable for research. Um, and so some of the solutions of tools that um, we've come up with in order to be able to enable um, multiple opinions about uh, the information that's found in the specimens and to allow collection managers and parasitologists uh, that are with these collections uh, to participate in that activity um, is one, I think maybe most important in this context, um, is a translation table um, that allows for the verbatim data or the data that's actually how it's written on the specimen label to be entered into the collection and institution database as it is without interpretation. But the interpretation is actually a layer that is between the institutions and global biotic interactions. Um, and that this is in the form of a, a CSV file that provides information about what the interaction is on the label how it should be mapped and what RO term um, the, the collection manager um, thinks that it should be mapped to. This allows changes of interpretations over time and multiple viewpoints. Um, another tool um, that has been developed is a, a project review page. Um, and so this is uh, a list of the terrestrial parasite tracker institutions with um, red or green sort of go or stop buttons to show if their data has been um, uh, reviewed by Globy, indexed, um, and is uh, visible uh, within the database. Um, and the review is really where I think some of the innovation has occurred because the review, um, you can think of it as um, a machine readable, uh, it's an auto-generated review of the data that Globy is indexing providing uh, unsolicited feedback about the data to the collection managers. So examples could be um, if Globy understands whether or not it's a valid date type um, is one example of what a review would be, um, but also is the interaction type or the biotic interaction that's being shared, that verbatim interaction, um, is it supported or unsupported presently uh, by Globy? Does Globy understand it? And um, so the review allows for a window into the data, another kind of window into the data for the collection managers in order to be able to understand their data. Another tool is that we're for the TPT Terrestrial Parasite Tracker Project, we are periodically publishing all of the data. So all of the data that's indexed, all of the occurrence data that is being produced by the project and these reviews um, in periodic Zenodo publications. So this level of versioning 
um, of how the project progresses um, uh, is going to be interesting for us to see how things have uh, changed over time uh, to a great level of detail and also provides um, the uh, um, the data as it's moved, uh, changed through time so people can cite particular versions of the data that they use in publication or for scientific publication. Um, so where are we now? Um, a number of different things. In February 2019, uh, about 10 million uh, arthropod records were indexed by Globy. In October 2020, that's been raised to 13 million. Um, this includes all the arthropod parasite data on Arctos and um, symbiotic collections of arthropod network. Um, but I think what's more interesting is the percent of interactions within the data set has increased um, for that many records. That's quite significant. Um, and the kinds of records and the interactions have changed. So there's been an increase with RO relationships interacts with, and if the little bar at the bottom would go away, you could see co-occurs with um, as well has now um, been entered into the ethos. And with that, I would like to thank um, all of the Terrestrial Parasite Tracker Project um, participants. Um, and also uh, just as a concluding remark, say that it wasn't necessarily apparent at the beginning of the project how important it was to include collection managers and the data managers at the institutions um, in the decision-making process, but that became more apparent as uh, the project developed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katya. Um, we have um, a question uh, from the audience uh, that comes with, it's a common question. It says, don't you think that interact by default is over interpretation? Should not be co-occurrence by default? Does interaction in ecology, um, as far as I remember, Anders Fins, his explanation has a very concrete meaning, not just two things spotted together. Uh, well, that's exactly the root of the uh, question that we were trying to answer, um, is that um, uh, one interpretation of a collection um, interacts with would be uh, appropriate, co-occurs with would be more appropriate, or a parasite of would be more appropriate. And that information is not necessarily written on the labels themselves. Thank you. Please everyone capture your, your questions for, for Katia in the chat or in the document, whatever you prefer. In the meantime, I have, I have a question for you. Uh, and that is, if I understood correctly, the Globy, um, initiative is mainly based in North America. So do you have plans or would you like it to, to get more global to include collections and specimens from other parts of the world? And how would you envision that happening? Well, so the ADBC project um, uh, funds only collections in the United States. And so that is a main reason why Terrestrial Parasite Tracker, the project I'm talking about is uh, US collections. Um, but uh, Globy um, is, uh, even though it's uh, the developer Yort is in San Francisco, it does not um, uh, only take North American data sets into the project. Thank you. There is another question in the chat. Um, this, are you able to capture parasite interactions from iNaturalist in Globy? What, they are, um, what the iNaturalist users need to do, what do they need to do to help this process? So in order for Globy to understand um, a, uh, a biotic association from iNaturalist, um, one of the interaction fields, so there's an ability to put associated taxa or to uh, specify the interaction um, uh, on an iNaturalist record. Um, and if the person does that, then the information will go to Globy. So Globy indexes the research grade records for my naturalist. Thank you. So we have here um, 
re related questions. Um, how are errors controlled in curatorial interpretation of these associations? Um, well, sorry, can you please repeat the question? Sure. Is that how, how are errors controlled in the curatorial interpretation of the associations? Well, so that's a great question. Um, I guess as a, a, a question back is how are errors controlled um, with automatic interpretations of the collections? So um, the, the uh, interpretations, the mappings are um, uh, the verbatim data is not modified in Globi. So you can get the original label information as well as the interpretations. Um, so as part of the terrestrial parasite tracker project, um, we've had, uh, there's three workshops and a lot of um, communication built into the project um, so that we can learn from the collection managers and the collection managers can learn from us. So a great deal of effort is actually going into informing on both sides how to do and manage these interpretations and learn from each other. Um, so uh, the flexibility for the collection managers to change their interpretation over time is one of the strengths. Um, the alternative is that uh, sometimes collection managers were interpreting directly into their databases. Um, and this still happens um, instead of capturing the label information verbatim on the collection, um, they would interpret it into the database itself um, because sometimes uh, the uh, collection databases uh, cannot uh, handle multiple interpretations. Um, and um, so this is a method so that they can capture verbatim and still have an interpretation on top of that. Thank you, Katya. I don't see right now any more questions. I see some discussion. Um, is there anyone that wants to ask? And we have a minute or so left before passing to the next uh, speaker. Um, I'd also like to mention that Yort is in the chat and he's adding more detail uh, in the chat. Um, oh, okay. And maybe we'll add it to the document too, uh, is relating to some of my uh, answers. We are capturing all those comments, not only the questions, but also the comments in the document. So both attendees and speakers can later go into the into that document and see what has been discussed during during the host session. Um, and so there's, there's here uh, another question from the Paul. It says, "What can we do to help more collections share this type of data?" So um, the first step is really to let uh, Global Biotic Interactions know where your data set is. Um, and the data set um, can be a CSV file, a TSV file, um, or a Darn Core Archive or other format. Um, and so if you go to Global uh, Biotic Interactions, uh, the website, you'll see a uh, link to contribute data. And um, so you just have to point it out. But in a broader scale, how do we encourage people to share more complex kinds of data sets um, uh, is, uh, I think, a question really worth talking about a lot more. Thank you very much, Katya. We'll keep discussing this uh, just in some, in some minutes in the discussion session.